In the pursuit for artificial general intelligence, there are countless important factors that need to be addressed. And one important factor that is still largely lacking is causality. Causality, as the name suggests, is the ability to understand and deduce cause and effect relationships. We as humans speak the language of causality. Our common sense stems from the ability to understand cause and effect relationships. Think about when it rains. When it rains, you open an umbrella because you don't want to get wet. And just that simple line of causal reasoning, rain causes wetness, humans don't like wetness, and umbrella causes dryness, um, is and a line of causal reasoning that most machines can't understand and is so important to how we as humans navigate through our world. So the narrow AI that we're familiar with today, um, the AI that can classify images between of dogs and cats, that like is very good at one thing but sucks at everything else, um, it sucks at everything else because it lacks common sense, which stems from a causality. If machines were able to learn that some things cause other things, then they would have a way more general understanding of how the world works. And that would lead to a com common sense and the ability to generalize between tasks. And so clearly causality is something that is very important in the field of machine learning and artificial intelligence. But what has been done in the field of causality? Well, a really cool thing that has been done in causality in the, in recently, just really recently, um, has been with a company called GNS Healthcare. They utilized causal inference to try to figure out why some patients with multiple myeloma, a type of blood cancer, survived longer than others after they had a stem cell transplant. And so they had this huge database of like 30,000 variables, and they used causal inference to figure out which variables had the most causal effect, had the greatest causal relationship with the lifespan, the length of survival of the patients with multiple, multiple myeloma. And with this, they were able to identify a few key proteins that the machine learning algorithm deduced had the most important uh, causal effect. And then the researchers tested on just a few, just like five or 10 proteins that they were able to easily pick out um, which protein had the most causal effect overall. And so something that would have taken months, months, maybe even years, um, only took a few weeks with causal inference. And so causal inference is clearly very cool. And causal inference works through something called dual calculus or causal calculus. And to understand how dual calculus works, we first have to understand and go back and take a look at good old correlations and statistics. So in a standard correlation, it's something like the probability of X given Y. So like the probability of a high cholesterol level given that you exercise. And this is something that we use everywhere in statistics, but it can lead to a lot of um, mis misunderstood assumptions. So in do calculus, we replace the probability of x given y with the probability of x given that do y, given that y is actually done. So this do is very important because it's the actual intervention, it's the actual doing of something that causes something else. So for example, what is the probability of um, a high cholesterol level given that I actually exercise instead of like given that exercise is done through some like data set. And so let me take you through an example of the clear, clear difference between uh, correlations and causality. So take like a barometer in air pressure. We know that air pressure causes barometer, but if, causes the reading on the barometer to go up. But if we looked at just the correlations between the two, we wouldn't be able to tell which one caused which. But if we use do calculus and we said, what is the probability that the barometer reading goes up given that I do, given that I change the air pressure, we would see that the barometer reading goes up. And we would then know that uh, the barometer and the air pressure have a causal relationship where air pressure causes the reading on the barometer. And this works vice versa. If we um, changed it so that we tried to do, we try to change the reading on the barometer, we would not see a change in the air pressure. And so we would know that there is not a causal relationship between the barometer and air pressure. And so something as simple as this do operator um, can lead to infinitely more complex causal diagrams where there are much more factors than just a barometer and air pressure. And with a little bit of calculus, we're able to pick out these causal diagrams just from looking at um, data, observational data or randomized data. And um, if machines were able to understand this, we would be way, way farther. We'd be, we would be a lot more closer to artificial general intelligence because humans speak 
through the language of causality. Our common sense, our understanding, our reason all come from causality. And if machines were able to understand that, we would be that much closer to actually getting artificial general intelligence.